Natural techniques that use electromagnetic waves and fields. Magnets are everywhere around us. We are free, natural, and what is inexhaustible. But it is electroculture, in fact. Electroculture is about seeing nature from an electromagnetic, magnetic, and energetic angle, and understanding the influence these forces have on living beings and the environment. The objective here is to capture the energies that surround us, use them locally, and interact with plants with the goal of increasing growth, germination, and resistance to plant diseases. So, is this just a utopia? No, this is a domain that has existed for a long time, even in ancient history. You can see it was used by the Egyptians and in the Middle Ages with Irish energy towers. In the Age of Enlightenment, active electroculture was much developed. And now, more recently, we are seeing both passive and active electroculture being developed more and more in vegetable gardens and for the environment. You should know that electroculture is found in encyclopedias and dictionaries from the early 20th century. However, it was suppressed with the transition to agro-industry and petrochemicals. How do you use electroculture? Electromagnetic ecology begins by developing a complementary vision. This means understanding nature from an electromagnetic, magnetic, and energetic perspective. For example, trees use a phenomenon called electroosmosis, along with the potential difference between the ground and the air, to help sap rise through the trees. Also, lightning strikes emit human waves, which are beneficial for living beings and can interact with our systems. You should understand that there are energy networks in the ground, known as telluric networks, that also interact with living organisms. Electromagnetic waves from space also interact with life on Earth. All of these radiations are around us. It's like when you want to listen to the radio in your car. The waves are outside the car, but you need the antenna to be well adjusted in order to capture them and hear the sound. Similarly, all these energies surround us. In various electroculture techniques, we use different systems to act locally with plants and seeds. With cultures, we have techniques that act more locally. Others can influence larger areas, over 10 meters, 100 meters, or even more. The toolbox of the electrocultivator is very large. For example, there are techniques like the pyramids that can be used to energize seeds or interact with plants. Locally, we have Irish energy towers made of basalt, cement, or clay. These towers are filled with volcanic rock, which interacts with the natural terrestrial magnetic field. The iron oxides inside create a magnetic field that interacts locally with your plants. We also use magnets, either made from beeswax or metal. Magnets are used, for example, on vines where galvanized iron wires are already present. By placing the wires in the axis of the magnetic field, we can enhance their magnetism by adding a magnet. This allows us to interact with the vine quite easily. Volcanic rock, specifically paramagnetic basalt, interacts with the magnetic field. It can be spread into the ground or used to create antennas that are buried in the soil. Atmospheric antennas can be arranged in the garden, either alone or connected with other systems. By using the potential differences created by the stack effects between different metals, they promote the exchange of solar electrons and ground air, thus interacting with plants. Lakowski rings, used for more localized action, help promote the health and overall well-being of plants and their energy resistance. This is based on the work of Georges Lakowski. Jose Carmen has shown us the power of intention, the influence of our thoughts on plants and their growth. We also have measuring devices to monitor some of these techniques, and the effects of these waves. Devices like the PCSM can measure paramagnetism, a method developed by Phil Callahan. The redox and pH levels can also be measured, linked to the bioelectronic work of Vincent and Louis. Claude Vincent, and we also have, for example, measuring devices based on the work of Wilhelm Reich. These devices allow us to see the life energy in motion and observe subtle energies. With these tools, we can visualize the effects on the environment that we can achieve with these techniques. Music also plays a role. The influence of vibratory waves on plants can be used in gardens, vegetable gardens, or agriculture. Here, I've just given you a brief overview of a few techniques. You should know that there are many videos and books available on this topic. In conclusion, more and more people are developing these techniques, and we're seeing increasingly interesting and impressive results. More people are now working with 21st century electroculture. I am so happy to have presented this to you briefly.
The goal, as I mentioned at the beginning, is to have bigger harvests, healthy crops, and an environment that is fertile and healthy. Electroculture fulfills this function and has this role. Agriculture, as the Latin term implies, means honoring the land. Electroculture honors electricity and life in the same way. Thank you. I wish you good experiments, discoveries, and see you soon.